Hi everyone, my name is Kevin. Today I wanna to show you how you can both get and also use the Microsoft Teams app on your phone, whether you have an iPhone or an Android phone. Now first off, what is Microsoft Teams? Well, Microsoft Teams brings together all of your chats, it brings together all of your meetings and all of your files into one place. Now, if you're just looking for how you just use Microsoft Teams at all, I have a video, uh, you can find the link in the description, which will give you an overview of how to use Microsoft Teams on your PC uh, or through your browser. However, today this is all focused on the mobile app. And I really like the Teams mobile app, especially since I've been home a lot more recently. The Teams mobile app allows me to go out and about and still join meetings, still uh, stay on top of chats or even access files. All right, well, enough talk. Why don't we jump into this? I'm gonna show you how, first off, you can get Microsoft Teams. So here I am today, I happen to be on an iPhone, but if you're on an Android device, you'll be able to follow along because the Teams app is very similar. So on an iPhone, what we wanna to do to get the app, we're gonna to go to the App Store. Now, if you're on an Android phone, you're gonna to go to the Play Store. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna search for Microsoft Teams. You could also search for Teams and it'll come up, but Microsoft Teams will just make sure that it's the top one on the list. So the first result should be Microsoft Teams. You could click into it. You can see more information about what the app does. Once again, it basically matches what I said, where you get your chats, meetings, and also files all in one location. In this case, I've already installed Microsoft Teams. I'm gonna go ahead and click on open, but if you haven't installed it yet, go ahead and click on that install button. So I'm gonna go ahead and open Microsoft Teams and this will drop me into the Teams app. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how you can use the app and what you can do with it. And what we're gonna do is on the bottom navigation, we're gonna start off on the left-hand side and then we're gonna work our way over to the right-hand side. And the first pivot that we're gonna look at is the activity pivot. So within the activity pivot, this is where I can stay on top of what's important to me and things that are happening around me. So here you'll see that within the activity view, I have two pieces of activity that uh, Teams is calling my attention to. First off, someone replied to a conversation that I'm in. Well, that's important to me. That's something I should probably go look at. And the second one, Adele at mentioned me. So if someone at mentions me, it'll notify me about this. So activity is a good place to start because it'll tell you what you need to stay on top of and what you need to go back to. Now what you could do too is especially if say you work in a, let's say a school or maybe you're part of an organization where there's lots of activity going on, in the top right hand corner if you click on the filter icon, you can also filter down to just specific types of activity. So let's say someone at mentions you and you really want to get back to someone anytime you get at mentioned, well you can filter down just to that type of activity. And here I could also just look at unread or maybe replies to my messages. And so you have lots of uh, controls over what type of activity you see. Now one of the other things you could do within the activity view, up in the top middle, right now it's showing my feed of activity, but what I can also do is if I click on that, I could also filter down to just my activity. So conversations that I've posted or files I've shared, if you want that view. So you have, you have some control there. Anytime you launch Teams, I would recommend starting in the activity view because that's gonna show you what's most important. So moving on now to the next pivot on the bottom, you also have the chat view. And so this is how you're gonna stay in touch with other individuals, maybe classmates, maybe your teacher, maybe other coworkers. And you can also stay in touch with multiple people. So you could also have group conversations. Now here, I have a few different conversations, one with Adele, one with Emily. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead, it looks like Emily asked me the question, when is the first assignment due? So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and I'll say uh, next Friday. And so I could go ahead and I could send this message back and we could have a conversation here. Now what I can also do is up in the top right hand corner, you know, maybe instead of chatting, maybe, you know, we're, we have a chat going back and forth and it's getting a little long just to do by typing. Um, I could also click on the video icon or the phone icon in the top right hand corner and I could kick off a video chat or I could kick off uh, just a conversation. Uh, so I'm gonna go back now and what I can do is if I wanna kick off a new conversation in the top right hand corner, uh, there's the little new icon. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And so what I could do is I could, you know, here I could choose from the selections and maybe I wanna add some other people. And so I could add multiple people here and I'm just gonna say hi, uh, just to keep it simple. And I'll send that through uh, to those two people. And so that kicks off a group conversation. One last thing that you could do within the chat view is if let's say you're part of a conversation that you're not interested in, if you just swipe it over to the left, 
uh, what you can do is uh, you could click on this more icon and you could either hide a conversation or you can mute the conversation so you're not notified every time activity is happening. All right, so that's the core functionality of the chat view. The next one, and this is the heart and soul of Microsoft Teams. There's, there's a reason this pivot has the same name as the app, Teams. So I'm gonna go ahead and click into Teams. And what you see here is I've already created a team. So the YouTube video creation course, that's a team. And then within that team here, there are a number of different channels. And so what I could do is if I wanna create a new team, I simply click on the icon in the top right hand corner with people and a plus sign. And what this will allow me to do is I could create a new team. I could also browse existing teams or I could join a team with a code. So let's say you know maybe that I work at a company and we're launching a new pro uh, product, maybe it's a drone. So I could create a team around that. Maybe I call it the Mark 8 project. And so I could create a team around that. In this case, I have a team called the YouTube Video Creation Course. Let's pretend that maybe it's a course at a college where you could learn all about YouTube and creating videos. And within here then what I've done is I've broken it up into a number of channels. So every team has a general channel and this is where you can just have general conversations related to the team. And what I've done too is I've created other channels, one called the action sequence, one called the final project, and one called the travel video. Typically what you wanna do is you wanna create channels around different topics. And so in this case, I've created different channels around different assignments or projects that the class is gonna be working on because I think conversations related to the action sequence will all be kind of grouped together. And once we move on to the final project, those conversations will be pretty different than the action sequence conversations. You can imagine, let's say with a company with pro the Mark 8 project or a drone launch that I mentioned earlier, perhaps you have your competitive, an competitive analysis as one channel, maybe you have research as another, maybe you have the engineering team as another channel so that way you just group the conversations into different channels it's just a way of how you want to organize conversations and file sharing that's happening so one of the things you might want to do is when you have a team once you've created a team how do you add other people to it you know a team is only as good as the activity that's happening within it so what I could do is I have this existing team I'm gonna click on the ellipses or the dot 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 next to the title YouTube video creation course so I'm gonna click on that and what I could do is I can manage members. So if I click on that, I could add additional people to my team. I could also assign people as owners for my team. If I click on this little plus icon in the top right hand corner, this is where I could add additional people to my course and I'll add Kat uh, to this course. I'm gonna go back, if I click on the dot dot uh, dot again, some of the other things that I could do is you could leave a team, you could edit the team or you could delete a team. So you have a lot of different control over what you do with these uh, teams. Now what I'm gonna do is let's click into the action sequence channel. And within this channel, the core view that I land in is the post view. And this is where I could see all conversations relating to this topic or this channel. And the nice thing is all of these conversations are persistent, meaning that if someone say joins the group, say a month down the road, they'll have access to all previous conversations and posts that happen. And so here I could see there's a conversation going on and here I can, uh, you know, here I could throw in a message. And what's nice is as I'm typing a message, I have the ability to add images, I could add attachments, I could add mention others. Uh, and then I could also stylize my text, whether I wanna italicize it or bold the text. Um, so I'm just gonna say hi right here, just for simplicity. And so I could respond uh, to the thread that's going on here. Now within a channel, not only can you have conversations with others, but if I click across the top, I can also click into files and I could share files with others that relate to this channel. And in this case, it's an action sequence project. And so I've included a Word document that has instructions. I'll go ahead and click on that. And here you see just a few quick instructions uh, for the action sequence that I'd like the class to work on. So it needs to be at least two minutes long, use at least three different camera angles, and then I said use a drone, an action camera, and a standard camera. So just a few instructions to help the class. But for any channel, you can set a set of files that relate to that channel. And then on the more tab over on the far right hand side, you could also attach other types of content. Uh, in this case, I have a OneNote, but really it could be any type of content, an Excel spreadsheet, Word documents, other types of files, or a planner, or a project, uh, a Trello board. So other types of things that you could attach here uh, to the channel. Uh, the one thing though is you'll have to create these on the desktop app. You can't create additional tabs or pivots here within the mobile app. 
So I'm gonna go back to the main view now. And, and so this is the core Teams view. This is where you'll likely uh, end up spending much of your time. Uh, the next thing that I wanna show too is over in the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, I'm gonna skip over the assignment pivot since that's uh, specific to education. All right, within the calendar pivot, this is where I can see all my different appointments and meetings that are coming up. And in my case, my calendar is fairly empty, but there's one event coming up called Friday Fun. And so what I could do is I can join this meeting. So I'm gonna go ahead click on the join button and here before I join the meeting I could decide whether is my camera on should my microphone be on when I join this meeting and what speaker do I want to use uh, in this case all of that looks good I'll leave the video off I'll leave the mic off and I'll simply join the meeting once I join the meeting here I'll turn my video on for just a moment hey but what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to see other people's video I'll be able to speak with others uh, what I can also do is if I click on the dot, 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 I have a lot of controls similar to the desktop experience of Teams. I could record a meeting, I could turn on captions, uh, I could share content. Uh, so there's really lots of richness I could do with meetings uh, on the mobile experience. If I click again, uh, one of the other things I could do in the top right hand corner, if I click on the people icon, this will allow me to add additional people. I could also see who's currently in the call. Uh, and then I also have a chat icon. So let's say I want to chat with people who are part of the meeting. Maybe I don't want to talk. Maybe I want to ask a question because it's a pretty busy conversation. I could go ahead and do that. Uh, and so you have the chat. I also have details related to the meeting. Uh, and any files associated with the meeting. So that's how you access meetings. Uh, it's a very feat, a very rich experience on the mobile device. Like I said earlier, I've been taking a lot of meetings on the go while walking and I have uh, an equally good experience on my mobile device. Whenever someone shares a screen, I see it just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead, let's exit the meeting and I'm gonna go back now to uh, the main screen. Um, here I am in calendars. In the top right-hand corner, I could click on that plus icon and that'll allow me to schedule a Teams meeting directly from the app. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that for now. Uh, some of the other things that I can do that are available in all the different pivots, up in the top left-hand corner, something I could do is there's a search icon or a magnifying glass. Uh, if I click on that, what I could do is I could search for, uh, let's say, a person. I'm going to search for Emily. And so I found the person. I also found messages that I've had with Emily. So it allows me to search across all my content in Teams. In this case, I'll click on Emily. And then what I could do is I could chat with her. I could call her. I could have a video chat with her. So any of that. And I'm going to go back now. Uh, so the search capability is kind of very rich, helps you get back to content, helps you get back to people. And then also in the top left hand corner, uh, there's what's called the hamburger icon. It kind of looks like a hamburger with the two buns and then the meat in the middle. Uh, but if I click on that, it allows me to set some of my settings. If let's say I want to turn on dark mode, let's say I want to change my status to away or available, uh, I can do that. So just a few of the things I could do via the settings menu. All right, well that is just a quick look at the Microsoft Teams app, whether you uh, you have an iPhone, whether you have an Android phone, uh, the app is really a good kind of complimentary experience to the Teams experience that you use on the desktop. It allows you to continue being productive on the go, uh, so highly recommend it. It's helped me become a lot more productive and then also efficient. Anyway, if this video helped you learn how to both get and also use Teams on your phone, please give this video a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, hit that subscribe button, that way you'll get a notification anytime new content like this comes out. And if there are any other topics that you wanna see me cover, leave a comment down below and I'll add it to my list of videos to create in the future. All right, well, that's all I had for you today. Hope to see you next time, bye.